In this part of the course, we will begin to work with the HTML sectioning elements. This will help us to really harness the power of semantic markup. HTML5 has seen the introduction of a number of sectioning elements that can be used to mark up your web pages. Using these elements gives more semantic meaning to your pages, allowing computer programs to better understand your content. In this section, you'll learn how to use these sectioning elements in your own websites. I'll be explaining when you should use certain elements over others, as well as what to do when none of these seem to fit correctly. We do have some options in those cases as well. To start off with, in addition to defining individual parts of your page, such as paragraph, header, or image, HTML also boasts a number of block-level elements used to define areas of your website. These are things such as the header, the navigation, the main content column, articles, asides, footers. We will look at how to plan a basic website structure and then write the HTML to represent this structure. Web pages can and will look pretty different from one another, but they all tend to share similar standard components. Prior to HTML5, web developers would commonly wrap the various areas of a web page in a div tag so that they could use that as a styling hook. Many web pages would contain a div with an attribute of header, footer, article, navigation, main, etc. The organization that was in charge of bringing HTML5 to fruition researched hundreds of thousands of web pages and came up with a list of the most commonly named attribute values, and that's how they decided on the sectioning structural elements. Let's dive in and learn about these. We will divide these into two parts, sectioning elements and non-sectioning elements. Let's get into it.